scene script. Women of the African diaspora and African-American women in particular consider this. Is hypergamy setting women's rights back hundreds of years? Hypergamy, a term that describes the practice of marrying or forming a relationship with someone of a higher social status or wealth, has been a controversial topic for quite some time. This concept is not new. It has been a societal norm across cultures and generations. But in our modern world, where equality and freedom are highly valued, it's worth asking, is hypergamy undermining the progress we've made? In the quest for equal rights, women have fought tirelessly for the ability to choose their own paths, free from societal constraints. They've strived to be recognized for their skills, their intellect, their passions, and not merely their associations or marital status. Yet the notion of hypergamy can potentially contradict these goals. When a woman's worth or success is tied to the status of her partner, it can limit her own identity and self-worth. It can also perpetuate harmful stereotypes, suggesting that women are dependent on men for social standing and financial stability. This is not to say that all women who marry into a higher social class are victims of this system. The issue arises when this becomes an expectation or standard. It's when society dictates that this is the norm or the ideal that we run into problems. When hypergamy becomes the expectation, it can restrict a woman's freedom to choose a partner based on love, compatibility, or personal preference. Moreover, it can inadvertently uphold patriarchal systems. If women are encouraged to seek out partners of higher status, it can perpetuate the idea that men are the providers and women the dependent party. This is an outdated notion that contradicts the strides we've made towards equality. So, as we continue to fight for women's rights and equality, it's crucial to reassess these societal norms and expectations. Is hypergamy truly a personal choice? Or is it a societal pressure that restricts women's freedom? It is a question worth pondering. The time to reevaluate our patriarchal systems is now. In a shocking revelation, a woman recently sued Jermaine Jackson, accusing him of sexual assault back in 1988. The woman known as Miss Barrett alleges that she came into contact with Jackson through her role as a musician's contractor and as a member of a union that represents musicians. She also knew Jackson through Berry Gordy, the founder of Motown Records, who had a personal and business relationship with her husband. According to her lawsuit, Miss Barrett claims that she was sexually assaulted by Jackson in the spring of 1988. She further alleges that Jackson, along with others, conspired to cover up the assault in order to keep their reputations and profits intact. The day after the alleged assault, Barrett claims she shared her ordeal with Mr. Gordy, but he failed to act, further perpetuating the cover-up. The lawsuit was filed under the state's Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act, a California law that allows for civil suits in sexual assault cases that reach beyond the statute of limitations if one or more parties are legally responsible, or if there was a cover-up involved. This law has enabled Miss Barrett to seek justice for the alleged assault despite the passage of time. Miss Barrett's lawsuit has already had significant repercussions. Michael Pellegrino, president of Artist Management Agency, which has represented Mr. Jackson since 2014, announced that the agency would be parting ways with the musician because of the lawsuit. He stated that the agency has a zero-tolerance policy concerning these matters and must consider the comfort and sentiments of their other clients in light of the current allegations. Jeff Anderson, a lawyer for Miss Barrett, has stated that his client decided to file the suit after learning about the Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act. He adds that their primary aim in bringing this case is to expose the alleged crime committed by Jermaine Jackson. The truth remains shrouded in mystery as the world awaits Jermaine Jackson's response. This lawsuit has sent ripples through the music industry, leading to significant consequences. Artists Management Agency, which represented Jermaine Jackson since 2014, has made a firm decision to sever ties with the musician in light of these allegations. Michael Pellegrino, the president of the agency, made it clear that their organization has a zero-tolerance policy concerning such matters. He expressed the necessity of feeling comfortable with who they represent, and unfortunately, due to the gravity of the current allegations, they had to consider the feelings of their other clients. This stance by the Artist Management Agency is a testament to the changing attitudes in the music industry, and indeed society at large. 
it reflects a growing intolerance for sexual misconduct, a shift from the days when such actions could be swept under the rug to protect the reputation and profits of the accused. Jeff Anderson, the lawyer representing the woman in this case, Miss Barrett, has also spoken out. He said that his client decided to file the lawsuit after learning about California's Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act. This law allows certain sexual abuse claims to be revived that would otherwise be barred by the statute of limitations. The intention behind filing this case, according to Anderson, is primarily to make it known that Jermaine Jackson committed a very serious crime. This lawsuit serves as a stark reminder of the power of accountability and the strength of survivors to seek justice, even decades after the alleged assault. It also underscores the importance of laws like California's Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act, which provides a platform for survivors to voice their experiences and seek justice, regardless of how much time has passed. These actions remind us that sexual assault allegations, no matter how old, carry significant weight and demand our attention. It is a call to everyone, especially within the music industry and other influential spaces, to take a stand against such behavior and affirm their commitment to zero tolerance for sexual misconduct. Now, it's your turn to join the discussion. We've examined the concept of hypergamy and its potential impact on women's rights. We've delved into a serious lawsuit against Jermaine Jackson, shedding light on alleged abuses and cover-ups. Now, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these issues? How do you perceive hypergamy and its implications on the progress of women's rights? What's your take on the lawsuit and the allegations against Jermaine Jackson? Do you believe this could be a turning point in holding individuals accountable for their actions, regardless of their status or influence? We invite you to share your perspectives in the comments section below. We value your insights and believe that your voice can contribute significantly to this ongoing conversation. Your voice matters. Share your thoughts, and together, let's keep the conversation going. Remember, the patriarchy is over.